Hello, I'm Eric with South Texas Sport Court. This is the Discovery Campus of the School of Science and Technology in Northwest San Antonio. SST is a growing charter school system with locations in San Antonio, Houston, and Corpus Christi. This is what the gym looked like before we started our overhaul. Now, this is the fifth San Antonio campus for the School of Science and Technology to get Sport Court response Maple Select gym flooring. We've also installed Sport Court gym flooring at three SST schools in Corpus Christi, and the Sport Court office in Houston has installed at two or three campuses in that area. In addition to the gym flooring, we also provide the School of Science and Technology with basketball goals, wall pads, volleyball systems, storage equipment, entry rugs, and cleaning equipment. This gym had a six-year-old pad-and-pour cushioned floor that was a few years overdue for a replacement. Yes, you heard that correctly. The blue floor was only six years old and well past its prime. In fact, the school initially asked for pricing to replace this floor three years ago, when the cushioned floor was only three years of age. I don't really like these floors. They're not a gym floor, though they are marketed as such. But my dislike for these floors is really based on the danger that they pose for the coaching staff and, of course, the students. These floors simply do not have proper surface traction, and they also lack proper shock absorption characteristics. So it brought me great pleasure to tear this floor into pieces bound for a landfill. Yes, it's unfortunate that these floors have such a short lifespan and that they are unable to be recycled or reused. The floor was not glued and therefore lifted pretty easily. We then cut it into small pieces with a reciprocating saw and hauled it out to the dumpster. Throughout this process, the gym filled with the stench of mildew. It was pretty bad. Even with the doors open, the smell seemed to linger all day. Eventually, we uncovered areas that were wet. God only knows how long the water had been trapped below the floor. This was likely the source of the mildew odor. Interestingly, the smell did not reveal itself until the floor was removed. It seems that the impermeable cushioned flooring was concealing a pretty bad mess. I'm really glad that we got that flooring out of there so that the drying process could begin. I suspect that these exterior doors are allowing water to seep in as the doors are not covered by an awning to protect them from the weather. Now, in addition to removing the floor, we also took down the wall pads so that they could be correctly reinstalled. Whoever initially hung these pads had simply used drywall screws to fasten them to the drywall. And if you know anything about anything, then you can probably figure out that attaching wall pads directly to drywall is a bad idea. With a crew of six, the flooring and wall pads were removed in a single day. The pads were neatly stacked out of the way in a locker room while the flooring filled about two-thirds of a 20-yard dumpster outside. The following morning, we cleaned up the remains of the old floor and began the process to reinstall the wall pads. I used a laser level to mark a center line along the walls. I then went back with a wall scanner to mark the locations of the steel studs. Ernesto used a table saw to cut one side off of the furring strips so that he'd have a square edge to work with. He and Shavar aligned the square edge to the level line that I had marked around the perimeter of the gym. Shavar's six and a half feet really comes in handy when doing this kind of work. Ernesto worked the drills, attaching the furring strips to the wall studs with sheet metal screws. Furring strips were also added at the middle and the bottom. That afternoon, Ernesto and his helper began hanging wall pads on the gym's left wall. This was a pretty quick process since the pads already had screw holes from the original installation. It also makes it a lot easier and faster when you're hanging pads on a wall without any doors or obstructions. Shavar pitched in everywhere, bringing the other guys' wall pads as well as continuing to clean up the gym throughout the day. The Sport Court response high-gloss gym flooring was delivered that afternoon. It took a couple of guys to push and pull the heavy pallets of flooring up the wheelchair ramp onto the sidewalk and into the gym. 
Throughout the day, we left the exterior doors open to bring in fresh air. We also kept the air conditioner running to help circulate the air. Despite these efforts, the mildew smell remained as strong as ever. On day number three, we continued reinstalling the wall pads. This went at a much slower pace because the rest of the pads were on walls with a lot of doors and obstructions. Altogether, there were close to two dozen pads which needed to be modified before they could be reinstalled. Now, you might be asking why the pads that already had cutouts couldn't simply be reused. Well, the quality of the cutouts, it was just horrible. Look at these cutouts. They're awful. There was no way I would have put these pads back looking like this. Plus, we raised the pads a couple of inches to the correct height, and in doing so, the existing cutouts were no longer in alignment with the outlets and switches. Some of the pads had also been vandalized and just simply could not be reused. Day three turned out to be the longest for this phase of the project. The mildew smell remained as potent as ever, but we endured despite the allergy issues. I'm just glad there were no students on campus and that we were able to get this done during the summertime so it has plenty of time to dry out before the kids come back. The next step on this project was to relocate the main basketball goals. You may have noticed at the beginning of this video that the lanes looked a little funny and not just because the floor was horrible. The basketball goal at one end was only about two feet from the wall. The goal at the other end was really close to a column. Basically, the backboards were directly above the court's baseline rather than being four feet in from the baseline. So instead of having a 19-foot lane, the lanes were only 15 feet. We brought in Tower Electric to move the lights that were directly in front of the goals, and then brought in Texas Sports Equipment to move the goals forward into their correct position. With the goals and lights moved, it was time to start work on the gym floor. But before we could install the sport court flooring, the entire concrete surface needed a little tender loving care. It just had way too many imperfections for any floor to be properly installed. Clean Air Flooring Removal, the company that we use to prep floors, sent out one of their guys to fine tune the surface with leveling cement. This was a two day process. The larger holes were filled on the first day, and then the entire surface was skim coated the following day. While the surface was being prepped, I used that time to shuffle the sheets of flooring so that they would be ready to install. We do this shuffling on every project in order to prevent any repeating pattern of the wood grain as the flooring is installed. It takes a lot of extra time and it's tiring, but it's a crucial step that we would never skip. Day one of the flooring installation started with a light scraping to remove any ridges left during the skim coating. This scraping was done to the entire floor. With the skim coat only being 13 to 14 hours old, scraping was pretty easy, though not a fast process. It takes several hours for two people to scrape a floor this size. While others were scraping and vacuuming, I used a laser level to pinpoint the center point of the backboards and mark those locations on the floor. We then set up a string line between these points to establish the court's center line. Most people would use a chalk line to snap a line on the floor, but I've seen chalk lines leave a curved line, so I don't ever use chalk lines. Instead, I trace along the taut string line by hand. It's slow, it's tedious, but it's accurate, and that's really all that counts. With the center line established, I can then find the center point between the backboards. This is the exact center of the court, and it's where my first sheet of flooring will be installed. But, of course, before any flooring is placed, we need to roll out the rubber underlayment. The rubber provides vertical shock absorption as well as noise reduction. Compared to suspended hardwood flooring, a basketball bounced on sport court gym flooring is about half as loud. The rubber is aligned to the center line, and then taped to the concrete with Gorilla Tape. Adjacent rolls of rubber are also taped to one another. Continuous taping along these seams is not necessary. It, really, it would be wasteful while not providing any additional benefits. So we usually apply short pieces of tape every few feet. 
This is all that is required to keep the rubber underlayment in position. And you may have noticed the slight gaps between the rolls of rubber. This is also intentional. The gaps ensure that there are no overlaps and also ensure that the concrete floor slab is able to off-gas any water vapor that may be rising up through the floor slab from below grade. The subject of water vapor, well, that's a whole nother rabbit hole for another video. Just know that impermeable floors, such as the cushion floor we removed, often trap water, preventing evaporation. Conversely, sport quart modular gym flooring allows the concrete floor slab to breathe and water vapor to evaporate. This makes the indoor air quality better and makes for a cleaner facility. As Ernesto, Torina, and Shavar add more rolls of rubber, my boys and I begin laying the sport quart gym flooring. We always start at center court. In this case, the school's logo was painted on the floor before the flooring was delivered. This, of course, speeds up the installation process. We align the first row of flooring to the center line. I then anchor that first row with Tapcon screws. Not all installers anchor their floors, and that's okay, everyone has their own techniques. But I prefer to anchor my floors, as I have found that this keeps the floor in the exact position I want. Without the anchors, all floating floors can move around a little bit. But some movement is good, and that's actually one of the benefits of sport court floorings. It's actually designed this way. When an athlete comes to an abrupt stop or change in direction, the sport court flooring absorbs some of these lateral energy forces. This takes strain off the body and transfers it to the floor. This is a key safety benefit of sport court. And it's why Nike Tournament of Champions reported about half as many injuries on sport court flooring compared to suspended hardwood. So a little movement is good, and my anchors allow this, but they prevent the floor from moving too much. Now, you can check out this page on our website to learn more about gym flooring safety. I'll drop a link down in the description below. With some of the flooring installed, I set up a laser at center court. This helps keep the center lines along the X and Y axis at perfect 90 degree angles. But instead of trying to align the floor to the laser, I just use the laser to mark a line across the midcourt line. This center line is marked on top of the blue painter tape that's on the rubber underlayment. So as we expand the court out to the sidelines, we're making sure the midcourt line is exactly where it needs to be. There's absolutely no guesswork and no assumptions. Everything is measured, every step is thought out, all of it is intentional. The design of this gym floor included seating squares. These are pieces of contrasting flooring used by coaches to help distribute students across the floor for various activities. The seating squares also help teachers keep classes lined up or organized when the gym is used for non-athletic events. At the end of the first installation day, most of the flooring is installed. Of course, none of the detail work along the walls is done. That would start the following day. So this is a great time to remind you to give this video a thumbs up by hitting that like button. And if you're not yet subscribed to our channel, it's a great time to do that too. I arrived early on the second day of the flooring installation. The volleyball floor sleeves needed to be removed and reinstalled. Since we moved the basketball goals, thus slightly changing the location of the court's center lines, the volleyball sleeves were no longer in the right place. They were close, but not quite right, and there was no way that I would ever leave them this way. Me and my crew do not cut corners. The job isn't done until it's done right, every time. Moving the volleyball sleeves and doing the floor prep were pro bono services, but it all worked out in the end. We actually spent a little less time removing the old floor than I had anticipated, so we were able to apply those extra funds towards the floor prep and the volleyball sleeves. We also had some other costs that came in a little higher than expected. Sometimes it just works out that way, but I truly do not care. I never have. Yes, my business needs to be profitable, but customer satisfaction and doing the job right just ranks higher on my scale of importance. The profits have almost always, not quite always, but almost always worked out. 
After pulling up sections of the floor and folding back the rubber, we used a diamond core bit to cut around the floor sleeves to pull them out. We then cored another hole where the sleeve needed to go. We pour fast setting anchor cement around the floor sleeves to lock them in place. We then clean up, put the rubber back, reinstall the flooring, and cut a hole for the cover plate. Altogether, this is a four or five hour process. While Ernesto and I were working on the floor sleeves, Shavar and Charina finished installing the flooring in the gym's entry halls and then moved on to all the flooring around the walls. Every single piece along the walls must be cut to fit. But this usually goes pretty quickly with two people, with one person cutting and the other person installing. And Charina and Shavar have done this so many times, they work great as a team at this task. With the floor sleeves done, Ernesto and I transition to the work at the doorways and the detailed cuts. I start with the flooring pieces to fit around the three columns and then move on to the doors. The gym had 10 doorways. Five of these were double wide doors, four of those had center columns, and the other five were single wide doors. Ernesto preps the area at the doors by installing an aluminum track. I then cut the flooring to fit around the frames. Then Ernesto comes back after me to install the vinyl transition pieces. Each single wide door takes a total of about 60 to 90 minutes, and the double wide doors with a column take a little bit longer. On day three of the flooring installation, Ernesto and I continued working on the flooring and transition pieces at the doors. Three of the doors were in walls which ran at odd angles relative to the pieces of flooring. This made these pieces a little more difficult to mark and to cut, but we were up for the challenge, and I'm really happy with the results. Shavar installed all of the sanitary cove molding. This is an all-day process, and it really slows down at the corners and the columns. Sanitary cove has a two-inch wide toe, so it doesn't just bend around corners like standard cove molding. It takes a lot more time to cut and fit at the corners, but it looks great when it's done. We finished up all the detail work on that third day. The next step is to paint the game lines. I returned by myself the Friday before Father's Day to start getting ready for the game line painting. The first step in this process is to clean the floor. I use a large, flat drag mop called a quart clean. This is what I recommend to all of my clients for daily cleaning. And then, of course, an automated floor scrubber for weekly cleaning. But this floor is still new, so it doesn't need deep cleaning. The quart clean can quickly remove any dust and leave this floor squeaky clean. I lay out the tape for the basketball lines first. These lines will be continuous and unbroken by the volleyball lines, so this tape goes down first. It takes a few hours to lay the tape for basketball. I then move on to volleyball. These lines go down much faster, as the volleyball court is just six straight lines, assuming it's paired with a basketball court. I cut out some of the intersections where the lines cross, but not all of them. I prefer to cut most of them just before the painting for fear that tape may peel at the corners. It's happened before, so I'm extra cautious with this step. Altogether, mopping and taping took about six hours. It's pretty detailed work and there's no way to really rush this if you want to get it right. The next day, Ernesto and I finish prepping for paint. This entails finishing the cutouts and taping the center stripe over the school's name and logo. I use a work light to help me see the intersections and get a perfect cut. Even in a well-lit gym, a work light makes it easier. With all of the tape finished, Ernesto wipes down the stripe space with acetone. This is the final step before painting. If you don't have a clean floor, you're not going to have good adhesion, so acetone is a critical part of this process. We use a two-part urethane paint. Application is a slow, careful process. Our goal is to not have any bleed between the pieces of flooring or under any of the tape. One trick in getting it right is to barely touch the paint roller to the paint when reloading the roller in the paint tray. So we never plunge the roller into the paint in the tray. This would overload the roller and flood too much paint onto the floor. In other words, we'd get paint where we don't want it. 
As I mentioned earlier, everything we do is done intentionally, and this is certainly the case when painting the game lines. We allow the paint to set up for about 30 minutes between coats. The amount of dry time may vary based on heat and humidity, but in a climate controlled space, we have found that anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes is pretty good. We begin peeling up the tape about 30 minutes after rolling on the second coat of paint. This step is the fastest part of the entire installation. And seeing those crisp, clean game lines, it's always a happy moment, provided nobody comes along and steps in the fresh paint. The floor on this project looks awesome, and I'm really happy for the students to now have sport court flooring, the safest gym floor in the world. Here's a quick before and after. Wow, what a difference. The new Sport Court High Gloss Gym looks great, but it also delivers safety, durability, longevity, and super low life cycle costs. So regardless of the metric you're using, it really is the best gym floor available today. By the way, the life expectancy of the floor is 20 or more years provided that maintenance and usage guidelines are followed. And these floors usually maintain some resale value even when they're 20 to 25 years old. Please stop by our website to view some of our other projects. Thanks for watching. God bless. To learn more about our products and services, please visit SouthTexasSportCourt.com. SportCourt is a registered trademark. Various design characteristics of products manufactured by SportCourt are either patented or have patents pending. Though other products in the marketplace may look similar to Sport Court, these knockoff products do not provide the energy absorbing safety benefits, longevity, quality, or value that is provided by Sport Court surfacing and related products.